It basically, it was illegal to be gay, it was illegal to be black, it was illegal to dance on a Sunday yeah. night. Everything yeah. was illegal unless you were a Christian. When was your golden era, do you think? Well, 1979, 1980 was, was really good because of the way things accelerated. Getting on the front page of the NME, that sort of thing. And we used to sell a lot of records in those days. Then the next period where we went a bit more jazz funky was the press hated us. Yeah. But the funny thing is when those albums That's were re-released re <laughs> by Soul Jazz in yeah. early 2000s, the, the reviews were the exact opposite yeah. of what they were when they came I out. Remember. Golden period, you know, last year and this year so far have been as, if not better, equal to yes. back then yeah. in the way that we're being accepted and, and, and you know, and and the sort of acclaim that we're getting now, which is good. We did Someone that. once told me a little wife, so I don't know if it's true, that talking heads, in terms of all the percussion elements, took a lot of influence from ACR. Well, it's, it's, not, it's nice to sort of hear that yeah. or say it, but David Byrne was really interested in, in us when we toured with them and yeah. stood at the side of the stage watching us every day. And they were quite rocky then. Yeah. But we, we weren't exactly the funkiest band in the world. We were quite punky still. Yeah. So, I mean, the one thing they taught us was how to tune our guitars. <laughs> we, didn't, we, didn't know to, we, we didn't have a, yeah. a tuner at the time and they had an electronic tuner. So at least that was the first tour we ever did where we yeah. were all in tune with each yeah. other. Yeah, which it... wiped away the punkiness of it a bit. Yeah. <laughs> when we, just in the mirror of 85, 86, yeah. You know, I think you guys, jazz defectors, there was a whole scene pre-acid house that had happened, which Karima. we... Yeah. Yeah, so the jazz scene was quite big big at that time. I mean, around that time as well, you had the Hacienda, so there was yeah. lots of interesting people who'd come over from New York, like Trouble Funk, um, There was about 30 Hacienda. people on stage of that Trouble Funk gig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, then people like Hugh and Clark DJing yeah. there. I think Mike Pickering had started DJing there yeah. by the time yeah, yeah. you arrived. But there was lots of other clubs as well, apart yeah. from the Hacienda, obviously. Was Tropicana happening then? Because I've, I've yeah, actually, believe yeah. it or not, I've actually got one of your posters in a you, frame from I, Tropicana, 82, 83? Yeah, you, you gave, didn't you give me one as well? Didn't you have a spare one? Yeah, Maybe. Tropicana was going then. It was, it was a great venue. I mm. seem to remember ACR and Kalima played there yeah. together, yeah. Yeah, that used to be funny because me and Jez were in a certain ratio and Tony Quigley and we were in Kalima. So when Kalima supported ACR, we had to do two gigs. Yes. Kids don't know how good they have it now. <laughs> <laughs> what was the illegal place that I, don't, I never went to? You mentioned on the Sunday. Uh, yeah, Jazz Defectors. Uh, Hugh and Clark DJ. It was on a Sunday night, and it was when James Anderton was chief of police, and you weren't allowed to dance yeah. on a Sunday night. It's basically it was illegal to be gay. It was illegal to be black. It was illegal to dance on a Sunday yeah. night. Everything yeah. was illegal unless you were a Christian. Yeah. And huh. Hugh and Clark had this night, but it was basically jazz. Yeah. And the first night we went there, it was the jazz defectors yeah, dancing yeah. on the dance floor, doing all the spinning and stuff. Yeah. They all had really tight jeans and loafers and <laughs> t-shirts on, and we arrived in uh, sort of forties D-mob suits, baggy double-breasted suits yeah. with short back and sides, and we were checking them out. They were checking us out, and then the next week we arrived in tight jeans and loafers, and they arrived in baggy D-mob suits. So. <laughs> We both copied and were influenced by each other. But the bouncers used to actually keep an eye out for police because if the police arrived, which they did at clubs in those days, if you people were found dancing, yeah. the club would get fined because yeah. you weren't allowed to dance on a Sunday. Yeah. You were allowed to open a club and have music on and, yeah. and sell beer, yeah. but you weren't allowed to yeah. dance. Yeah, I loved it. When I came to Manchester, Colin Curtis, obviously you guys, um, Greg Wilson, there's all these names we knew about. People travelled over here a lot. So yeah, yeah. I remember going to Berlin's Colin Curtis, I think on a Tuesday. And I think it only, only lasted about a year that yeah, yeah. Then it had gone. There was a lot of underground black music, which mm. was 
a, 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 quite a northern thing at that time where people travel far and wide. It was, it was incredibly esoteric. It was yeah, very yeah, underground, yeah. you know. There weren't many people involved. The, the, the in reason it. it was underground, though, was because a lot of those black kids couldn't get into yeah. the, the, the yeah. clubs, the, the white clubs, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, so yeah. they had their own nights, really, which when we used to go to legend when it first started that that yeah. wednesday night we were we were like the token white people in there yeah. and we used to get some really bad yeah vibes off some of the black lads you know yeah. because we were like stepping into their territory yeah. but that that soon went all that that vibe i mean friday did night have, it has, you know nude night was predominantly a black coat at one, yeah you know when but when, before before the house scene, yeah. lots of black kids used to get turned so, away from yeah. that scene, and they used to use the excuse that they were wearing trainers. Yeah. Then they yeah, just yeah, next yeah. minute you'd see a, a white person yeah. going with trainers on. Yeah. The house scene did turn that whole yeah. thing round yeah. in a way, yeah. and, and made it more universal. You've seen that footage? Uh, it was put up ages ago. Of it's actually in Moss Side. I think Hewan's DJing. And it's 85, 86, and they're all jazz dancing to house music, which to me was like the shock of the year when I first saw that in Sheffield. I was like, wow. Uh, and I remember, um, I think it was Parrot or someone was, and they, someone had put some Trouble Funk or Go Go on, and they all, yeah. all the lads left, they didn't want that. They wanted house music because right. they could footwork to it better in the way they danced to jazz. Yeah, so yeah. there was just this sort of, so when I came to, uh, Manchester, it was like a step up in terms of this, it was a bigger city. Yeah. You know, when I saw the jazz defectors, what was that weird, what was it called? Consorts? Was it Consorts? What was that? Un it was underneath Square Albert. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. And it was like, you know that, I want a, remember that advert, I want a baby share. There's all these yeah. people with fucking berries and D-mob. And I was so impressed with the look. The Four Winds used to have a residency there who were like a jazz outfit, who were a little, little bit of an offshoot of Kalima. Even though people were into jazz, they would still, you'd still entertain like electro. Of course, And you'd yeah. still entertain funk and you'd yeah. still, you know, your you, you musical taste just stretched further really. I think now some of that's going on again. Mm. You know, we were talked about it a while ago. You know, in terms of like your son being into techno, but actually would you know there's a yeah. bit of a natural eclecticism mm. where people aren't just into one thing. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I remember '86 for me. I'll be honest. By the time I came to Manchester, I wasn't really into that whole Balearic thing that happened. I was much more house music for me was the shock of the new. And when you're young, you kind of, you hear one thing, whether it's drum and bass or house music, and that's all you want to hear yeah, yeah. for a while. And then I think naturally you you, you get into other styles of music. Yeah, um, well, we were talking about clubbing in Manchester now and the White Hotel and uh, Hidden. I can go to the White Hotel or, or Hidden, I'm 58, and I don't get any funny looks. No, no. Which yeah. is really good, so for a start the kids aren't ageist and each time I've gone there I've, I've been, been to see Andy Weatherall one time then I've been to see a night where I don't know who the DJs are and it's a really young crowd but it, it's it's yeah. it's just the general yeah. vibe is really yeah. good you know? I remember coming to Manchester first coming to Manchester there was the, the, the corner house and the lad who worked there Dave Crockett I think he used to do break dancing and he was about 28 I was like how come he's still in the clubs you know, 28, I think it's true. <laughs> I think there's a lot less, there's more inclusivity, I think. Yeah. And like, you know, with Home Electric and all the gay clubs and things like Meat Free. Yeah. I mean, Hidden White Hotel are funny because it's like, it reminds me of Manchester 35 years ago. It's a lot more, it's off piece, it's off grid a bit, it's a lot smaller, it's a bit more scuzzy. And I think, you know, like Cheatham Hill, Strange Ways, Salford, what, what there's Mantra up in Ancoats. Yeah. These springs of little clubs on the kind of, what you call it, the twilight zone. Cheap rent. Yeah, cheap rent. There's yeah. no less people living there. It's a there. bit like Berlin when the Berlin Wall came down. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I read the uh, Lawrence book on the New York, so you're in it actually, but they were saying that in Lower East Side in mid 70s to the 80s, it was cheap rent. Mm. Yeah. Immigration, Meat students, all. Tribeca, yeah. all the places that are mega expensive yeah. now. And in a way that's where the magic happened, wasn't it? Because it's like when you have cheap rent and loads of people from different backgrounds, students hanging out with immigrants and the, the, you know, the, yeah, yeah. do the, you think, because you, you were there weren't you, 80? When, when 90, were you there? 1980 was the first time we went, yeah. And is that when you recorded there? Yeah, F recorded first album there. Yeah, it was there, it was a great club scene. I mean we, it was an eye-opener really because you either had your little small clubs, your dirty dingy clubs, yeah. or your massive clubs with yeah. the best sound system that you'd ever heard and the best lighting system. 
and we had nothing like that in Manchester, you know. So I bet be, that was a different city then, then wasn't it? Jesus. It was, it was pretty grim. It was on the edge, but good because of that. But, you, you know, if you were walking around at midnight, you had to be very, very yeah. careful. I yeah. have to say that when we took, uh, what you call him, Nicky Siano up to uh, Hedden, it was like pissing down with rain. He went, get the fuck out of here. It was <laughs> like this. You know, if, I mean, if you walk up in Cheat, you'll have to... It, there's, yeah, there, yeah. there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. And, then, and I think that's why the music is what hotel. Yeah. Uh, every DJ I know who said to me, Luke, this club is the best club in the country at the moment. And yeah. I think it's not big and there's just this magic round it because a bit like when you were in New York, there's a bit of danger there. There's no cameras, there's no smoking bands, there's no... The bouncers haven't got attitude. Yeah. It's funny, I think, you know, like when you look at Manchester, I'm not, I'm not talking about necessarily the warehouse, but on the big stuff. We've been, Manchester never had a super club as such, like Ministry of Sound or Cream. Uh, I know the Hacienda was there, mm. but by yeah. its own yeah, failings, yeah. it kind of, I think I, I think people have always warmed to the kind of, the small things that mutate in Manchester, the little, I, I, people have, I don't know, people are less brand, awful, yeah, word, yeah. orientated, and they just go to a variety of things. Why yeah, yeah. you still go well, to the White Hotel? Well, the best thing was when, when, when the Hacienda closed for a short while, yeah, was, right? Yeah. And everyone started going to other yeah. places. That yeah. was really good. And the police suddenly shat themselves because they you know, they had cameras in the pub opposite yeah. and they were watching people coming yeah. and going. And they thought, we don't know where everyone is now. Yeah which yeah. I think they actually went back to um, Tony Wilson and Rob and said, will you open up again? Because yeah. they were worried yeah. about uh, where everyone had gone. But the Hacienda in those last few years had probably kind of lost some of its magic anyway. And there were people did, yeah. doing their own thing. So I think that's the thing, isn't it, magic? Just it always just by osmosis, just mutates, mutates. And then like we said, there's no real difference between um, Cheetah Mill now, as opposed to like the PSV mm. 35 years ago, there's that kind of, I don't know, it's just a bit more illegal feeling. Mm. Uh, and, it's just, and, and people warm to that in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. The shininess never really, you did have that whole funky house thing where there was cocaine yeah. and gangsters, but it was just, a th I would say that didn't have much weight, you know, uh, in Manchester mm. uh, as much. I think people like that kind of, Grittier, yeah, yeah. Uh, that gr I know it's, it's, that same, same with food, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you don't want to go in no. and, and eat in a place that's got like really expensive crockery. I think that's an interesting thing you said because I, I definitely don't feel out of place. I mean, all right, on certain nights where everyone's eighteen, maybe, but I think it's, uh, it's a lot more open. <laughs> I think the same cycle will happen that's happened over the last thirty years, which is people will gravitate to the areas where they can get cheap rent and I think you know Cheetah Mill interestingly there's all sorts of plans for hotels and development and so in five years it won't White be Hotel and Hidden probably won't be there or yeah. the only thing that will help Hidden is unfortunately a recession because that will just stop all development like 2008 and it will allow to be cheap rent I mean you know yeah. you go down there Sunday people are selling swag it's just you know counterfeit it's a mad mad area mm. it's like its own little ecosystem if that gets developed, then I think it will just move again. It will go further into Cheat Mill, it will go Salford, or it will go into Ardwick, into those arches. And I think the big club thing, I mean, I, you know, when the Warehouse Project was on, I think all these things can coexist anyway. Because I think if you want the big thing, and that, you know, it's there, then if you want the smaller thing, and I think those things kind of coexist and, and just get on with it. And probably uh, that will just continue, I think. There will just yeah. be. And you know, areas like Hume have gone that, you know, in terms of that kind of squat culture. Well, you can you've do got the old Naya Centre now that's yeah. opened up, yeah. another venue. Then you've got groups of people like Levels yeah. who do really good things and, yeah. and use all the venues in yeah. Manchester. They don't just stick to one. Yeah, yeah. They move about and do nights at all the venues and always really well attended and put out tunes all the time. A bit, they're a bit like factory records. Every, every tune yeah. is catalogued. Uh, they do nights to promote their music, and that's what you need more of. You need more of groups of people who who make music and put on nights. I think the making music and the nights is it's really important that yeah. you have the two together. Otherwise, you just end up with nights where you're playing lots of other people's music. You've yeah, got it's to, true. You've got to put in the whole package. Yeah, you yeah know? it's true. I mean, it's interesting. Like Gina Breeze, who plays on the electric, there's there's a little group of them. 
meat free and you know they're, all, yeah. they're doing their own music they're putting yeah, stuff well, out well, on you've got people like Chris Massey and Paulette and, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and I can't remember the name of it but my mind is just so dead you know they've just come through done that amazing album Know the levels, guys. Their bias done some stuff with them. Yeah, children's use, like, yeah, yeah. They've been these, they've been going for ages. They have. They? But yeah, I tell but you what, you just, listen to that yeah. and it sounds incredible. And I think yeah. that you know that uh, the album's done really well. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. So I think you know, to me, there's an excitement again. And I don't think you know coming from Sheffield, Manchester. Well, I like Sheffield, no one really suffers for. So I think if you try and put yourself up on this pedestal of where no one really yeah. people just like it when people just get on with it. And mutate slowly and yeah yeah so yeah natural finish